Hello fellow Bastic Foes, you join me back at the messy as usual bench. Today we're going to be giving the Foverine a upgrade, let's say. First of all, it's going to be upgraded because it's going to be put into this G36C here, so that way it won't look like an M4. And we're also going to be giving it a full auto feature as well. This is my JEG G36C. I'll be honest with you, it doesn't get much use anymore. It's got a Jeff Tron Burst Fire MOSFET. I'm going to take that out and chuck it in something else. Um, but yeah, th this gun's not getting any use right now, so I thought why not use it as a platform for the Foverine. And right now, let me go grab the Foverine. Now the Foverine recently has been chucked into a different gun. This is the dreaded Specner Arms HK416C, and it looks the part, it really does. I don't like M4s, but I don't mind 416s. And this thing, I don't even, I'll tell you as we're taking it apart. And why I'm probably going to be chucking away this 416. I'm going to take that front grip. Uh, so we'll deal with the externals later on. Basically, we chucked the Foverine guts into this. And the Foverine guts consist of this G&G uh, G &G, gearbox with the Foverine engine in. Check out the videos of the, of the Foverine on the channel. We decided rather than putting it in the G&G &G CM16 again, why don't we put it inside a gun that actually looks looks the part. So we've got the uh, Specter Arms HK416C here. This is never going to come off this, this buffer tube. It took a hammer to put it on, so I'm going to have to just disconnect the pipe, I reckon. Do not like this Specter Arms 416C. It's cost me probably hundreds of hours of mucking about with it, trying to get it to work and all of that. And it, it's just a frustrating thing to use. And sure enough, when I went to use it la when I went to use it in this state, it decided not to work and even though I'd been testing it all morning I tested it, it was at Commando Elite as usual, I tested it in the morning the FPS had dropped, the hop unit was okay but that was another thing with the Spectre that I didn't like was the hop consistency however I decided you know what I'll use the AK for the morning at least use the AK in the morning I don't think there was any footage of that day exists uh, but if you did see, if that footage did exist, you'd have seen me smashing this against a tree. Not that hard, because I remembered that I had loads of attachments on it, and I didn't want to smash it up too much, and I also didn't want to break the engine. But I lost my rag with this gun really badly. It had been working all morning when I was testing it. Got out onto the field, and it decided then to fire a couple of shots and jam. And when testing this, I did have an issue where we managed to fire the bucking down the barrel, partially down the barrel. I suspect with this Spectner, it's a, le a complete lemon. I'll be honest with you, I've never really heard amazing things about Spectners. They've always been very finicky. But this one really just took the cake. I only had two mags, which it would feed from, somewhat reliably. And even then, it was a bit debatable whether or not it was you know, worth using. And then we ch we tried it during a game that I really... I, I, it was... D uh, the scenario which I was using it in, I, I can't... I, it was perfect. It was a game where we had to defend... Um, oh, what's his name? I can't remember his name. Bless him. Um, someone dressed up as a... I think it was an oil baron or something, or a shake or something. And we were at his personal security. I really liked those sort of games. Um, personal security lot only had one life, I think. Although, actually, I think it might have had two lives. I can't remember. But it didn't matter with me, because I, after I died, I went. I just went back to the not-so-safe zone to go grab the AK again. It was near the church area of Commando Elite, which, if you are a regular there, or if you've been there, you'll know what I'm talking about. I was quite far forward compared to them, the rest of my team, and I thought, well, I can be there, quietly use this to take the enemy apart. Sure enough, basically got surrounded by enemies whilst hidden in a bush. And the thing decided not to work. It jammed on like the very first shot. I didn't get a single... I don't think I fired more than three shots out of it. Because I kept fiddling around with it. Desperately trying to get it to work. To no avail. And I pulled out my Scorpion. And did far better with the Scorpion. Than anything else. Than, than that bloody gun. And I was frankly livid at that gun. I was so cross. The Spectre... You get it working all. You can get it working and test it all throughout the week beforehand. As soon, as soon as it gets to the weekend when you're going to use it, it just doesn't work. Again, it, it did the inexplicable 100 FPS loss um, with the new nozzle that I I have in the um, Foverine. It slightly reduced the FPS because it's got a smaller internal diameter to make it more robust. Um, but that's you know that's fine. It doesn't bother me. It's perfectly usable. But um, yeah, th this 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 
I, 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 it just, it just didn't, it, it, it just, it just, I, I can't even, it, it pisses me off just thinking back to it. It was the perfect time for that Spectre to work. If it worked, I would have probably got, honestly, they were about 10 feet away from me at one point. And like I said, I got a kill with the scorpion against, um, there was a couple of gillies who walked ahead in front of me. And so I just fired at them, got one of them, the other one scarpered off. I can't even, I was, I was, I stayed calm. Then walking back to the not so safe zone was when I started ranting and raving about this gun to camera. Very much burning, severing any bridges or burning any bridges which could be made with spec now. I was so angry because that would have been, that would have been a prime, that would have been an awesome video if that all played out. Even if I only got like four or five of them, but covertly and hidden, that would have been perfect for that thing. It had one opportunity it had a chance to redeem itself after what? Nearly, I think we've nearly had it like three or four years. I think we got it late 2019. It had an opportunity to redeem itself and it failed. And it, it, it failed miserably. And I'm not interested in hearing people saying, oh, we could have done this, could have done that. We've done everything with this gun. Done everything that would make a difference. It's had several different gearboxes in with HPA'd it uh, with this system, which worked with everything else. Um, we've tried numerous hop units, numerous barrels. We've put the, we've made it into a DMR at 430 FPS, and it's had the same range as it did out the box at 300 odd. Um, it just doesn't work. It just does not. And then inexplicably, it will lose power. You will test it all day long. It'll be absolutely perfect the night before. As soon as you get there, you've lost 100 FPS for a completely inexplicable. Uh, just there's no no reason behind it. The only thing we're going to be keeping out of this Spectre build for the G36 is the inner barrel, which is an alleged allegedly a tight bore, the stock one. Uh, the reason why we're keeping it is because we've Sugru hopped it. Uh, it's got a G and G hop unit in right now, and it's got a Sugru hop, and that barrel seems to be all right. My AK has acquired a lot of work in its time. But at least my AK is more fun to use than this thing, and it has worked. The 416 has been nothing but trouble. And if you look at one of my my second bit of gameplay, and even the first game uh, bit of gameplay on the channel, terrible quality, poor, poorly edited, crap cameras, nothing like what they are now. Much better now. Oh, there's a screw still in there. You'll see what I mean. It was just all over the place, this gun. Even when I had the Kestrel in it, which I've still got in the MP5. I really like that Kestrel. Um, I haven't used that gun much. Uh, my mate did when I was ill with COVID. John used it and got on really well with it. I put the Kestrel in the 416 to do a video on it um, after Kestrel uh, e Shooter sent me that thing. And I was very grateful for that. And it's uh, honestly, it's a great bit of kit. I'm not just saying that because I was sent one. I... I can't fault it, it's done the job fine. But I didn't feel like it was fair on the Kestrel to put it in the 416 after all of that. So it's got it's now in the MP5. And I got so, so sick of people going, well, you just got to do this, you just got to do that. No, 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 I don't just have to do anything. There's no such thing as just do something with that 416. Right, now we've got the HPA engine out. We'll look at the Filorto later on. All right, we're going to take the front end off the G36C. And we have on the bottom here a Jeftron processor unit MOSFET. Pull that pin out. That's a trigger spring. Mag release off. I massively prefer the G36 family to the uh, M4s. Uh, just how quickly you can get the gearboxes out of them. So we now then take out this screw at the back here. Now that's done, pull back the hop unit, hook that out. I have no idea where the, the bolt release for this went, but that's really low priority. I still don't like HPA in most circumstances because I feel like it's a waste. Why would you want a HPA AR if you're then going to run around, charge around everywhere with it? In my mind, the silent nature of these things is the big selling point. So I wouldn't want to put it in a gun that I'm then going to go charging around with like a maniac because it just kind of ruins the point of having a quiet gun. And not only that, you have to then run around with a tank and airline to slow you down. I don't recall putting a G and G in this. Okay, well, we'll probably keep it the same then. I'm probably going to only be using the two fives on this anyway. Two fives are my go-to intermediate uh, weight, you could say. Sort of, you know, the airsoft equivalent of a 5.56. It's also got a bearing spring guide in this, so we can take that out, use that in something else. 
I'm not too worried about shims flying everywhere because we're not going to need them anymore. Um, we won't need any of that. Might look at the cylinder, see if it's a better option. No, it's not. It's got an even wider window. You can get away with using a ported cylinder with these HPA engines. Um, but it's got to be quite a small port. And you've got to have the port the wrong way around. If you have this <laughs> that, that way around in an AEG, you're going to leak a load of... You're going to have... No, there's no, just, you're not going to be compressing air because it's going to be venting out the side. No, um, oh, I need that spring. Although, we're going to be upgrading that spring, actually, um, to an AEG spring like what John's MP5's got. And I'm starting to think it might be a valve on the outside job again, but I uh, can't see where else it will go. The next thing I just remembered we've got to do as well is work out how to get full auto on this thing. Again, it will just be a micro switch, like with John's build. It'll be a micro switch in a, in a way that will press against... Um, the cutoff lever when you move the selector plate around. That's another reason why we can't cut too much out. Well, let's just wash the gearbox case and then go from there. Just clean the gearbox casing out. It's worth pointing out that this is the original stock piston. And it doesn't seem to have any sort of excessive wear on it, so it's not bad. I had a lot of use this gun. It was like the third gun I ever got, uh, JG G36C. <laughs> the funny thing is, I used to not like the G36C because before we got into airsoft, my dad found a airsoft G36C and he was like, oh, well, look at that. And I said, yeah, I'd rather have an M4, which to me is absolute, it's heresy now. I hate, I, I don't like M4s. And then you get people who kit them theirs up and oh, look, I've got a different rail system on it, especially in the airsoft world. It's just an M4, mate. You know, oh, it's a Mark, I've got Mark 18. It's an M4. Now, as a few of you might be saying, well, hang on a second, doesn't the T1000 engine, Kuba's T1000 engine, have a um, an M4 nozzle in it? Yes, it, it, that's true, it does. I did design my own one for John's MP5, which was slightly shorter. Uh, I think it was slightly shorter. However, what's nice about this thing is it does sort of extend as far as it needs to before it, it, and then it will actually hit something. So, I might be able to get away with an M4 nozzle because it, it will probably, it might, might, it, massive emphasis on the might. Uh, extend out long enough to be a, uh, or it, basically it goes out and then it will it will stop going forward when it hits something. So it's sort of like self-regulating. The other thing is as well with the fovarine, there was a slight gap along the top. It wasn't a perfect fit. Doesn't really matter that much. And then we can test if this will actually engage. If we just put this in the gun, I want to make sure that the nozzle length is correct before anything else, in case I have to change some sizes and parameters so we'll just have the air coming out of the grip even though I don't normally like that well in this case it's it'll be fed from an external valve um, I honestly can't see how we're gonna do this with an internal valve with at least with that that valve there we just do not have the space um, and the luxury to cut things out even if you somehow got it in the front end of the gun bear in mind this bugger all battery space in these things um, I wouldn't want all that piping running backwards and forwards because you'd have to have the airline, uh, the input at the back of the gun. It would have to run forward to the valve, come around, go into the engine like that. You got so many bends and extra pieces of pipe. You're just going to rob yourself of uh, pressure of uh, volume. Uh, not volume. What's it called? When firefighters, uh, you know, when when fire brigades have their hoses out, um, <laughs> their 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 water hoses. That is, uh, they have to avoid. Um, they have to limit the amount of kinks they have in it, or bends, or imperfections in how the pipe's rooted um, otherwise you will end up with um, a significant drop in pressure and because of that we need to we need to factor that in as well that we can't just go and have the pipe bending around everywhere or we'll end up with so much resistance on the pipe it will absolutely ruin the pressure slide that in like so I put the little carriage on which will allow us to put the uh, not carriage. I can't think of the right word, but it allows us to use this pin here to anchor it in. Rather than using a screwdriver head, I'm going to use a little hammer I've got out. I need to see how much air we've got, which is probably sweet Fanny Adams, but I haven't got the most air in the world. I've only just got about 800p aside, but it'll be right for what we want. The nozzle's way too short. Okay then. <sighs> Looks like it needs a new nozzle then. That nozzle's about four mil too short. Way too short. Right, we've got a new nozzle in there for G36s. It's got about four mil, four and a bit mil longer uh, nozzle than a M4 one. 
and for reference here was the old one and sanded it down using a drill as a lathe because why not <laughs> we do have a round in battery so oh well let's give it a go there we are that's better travel all right let's have a go then bit all over the shop right now but hang on a few shots initially that were a bit high but yeah I mean we've got sweet Fanny Adams in our bottle so that won't help frankly with those chrono readings they were all right there was one which concerned me which was at 341 I can't remember which or if it was the first one it would kind of make sense because of the back pressure and you know the air pressure building up in it and all that so next up we've got to we'll put the full auto switch in it wasn't for that poxy nut I could fit somewhat all right in there but I don't want to be doing that if I were to put a pouch on the back I'd put a pouch on the back well, yeah, what well, we've got to put, do the wiring on the inside of the gearbox, uh, and then we've got to modify the fire control unit of the Foverine to do full auto. And I've got the schematic of the newer design I uh, cobbled together. The, the, the changes needed to that circuit board are very minor, like literally a resistor and a couple of wires, uh, a variable resistor, I should add. And. Um, that will allow us to do full auto. Okay, there we are. We have a channel for our pipe, so I'll go wash this out again. Actually, what I've just decided to do, before I wash it out, I'm going to get this uh, holes drilled for the switch. Similar to the MP5 and M4s, when this is on full auto, this is pushed out of the way. A few rat tails later, we have our two holes for our micro switch. So we'll go wash all of this out now. And see if it all works. There we are. These trigger contacts won't be taking much current anymore. Probably at most an amp. And that'll probably be just the inrush current from the solenoid. So we've got our main power line. This will go to the front of the gun so we can have the battery in the hand grip. I don't want the fire rate too fast. I want it to sort of be like a, a normal G36, which is about 600, ra 600 rounds a minute. Especially if I'm going to be using 30 round low caps. I'm not having it going... Boom. Even though, to be fair, I'll mostly be doing semi-auto anyway. We're also going to unmummify the circuit here. Sent about 20, probably about 20 plus enemies back to respawn, as well as one friendly, this circuit. That was uh, when I shot Lewis. Didn't hear John's panics, like, no, that's, wait, Joe, that's, that's, that's Lewis. By the time I heard him, I'd already, <laughs> it was too late for Lewis, I'm afraid. This is the diode between between pin five, uh, pin six, and pin seven. We need to take a tap off of each, the blob there and the blob there. The two connections. We've got an alligator clip between one of the connections on the switch and one of these uh, wires on the board. We'll grab another one, and then we want to grab one of our uh, two hundred k pots. I also just realised we don't have the solenoid on this, so we'll have to go by the um, flashing, the LED flashing, to signal when it's firing, because the LED will light. The LED is not necessary, but it's an. I think it's a little nice feature when you're at least designing it. Um, it also gives a bit of fault finding if you end up with an instance where, if you have too much air pressure going through that valve. Um, it won't open. It cannot overcome the pressure. So if you have an LED on there, it means you can actually um, fault find. So you can work out if what I've done in several cases is just have the air pressure too high and the valve can't open. So you go, oh, okay, the valve's doing this and back it off and you're working again. Um, so if, the va if there is actually a valve fault, you'd work out if it's the valve or if it's the if if you're trying to work out why it's not working. And we've got an alligator clipped to one side of the potentiometer, and then we'll put another one to the wiper, and that will go to the other connection on the board here. So what we have is our pot, our board, and our switch for full auto. So right now we should have semi, if we've done it right. I also don't know what the potentiometer is set to, um, on the full auto, semi. Now I'm running out of hands here, but in theory, 
it should work the same if I do this. Yep, okay then. And then if I disconnect it, change the resistance value. It's going slower. But as you can see, we now have a full auto feature. That's probably about the fire rate we want. I mean, I'm probably going to wire up the potentiometer the wrong way around and have to readjust it anyway, but there we go. Proof of concept is there that all we've got to do is just tap onto that board there with a couple of components, and that's it. You join me back at the Womble Trap. I have finally finished the circuit board for this. Let me zoom right in for you. What I've done is I've added a breakout board for the full auto uh, potentiometer, which will adjust the fire rate or the close time of the potentiometer. I've also wired on, wired on, I've also soldered on a big long wire to feed through the back for the solenoid. I've tinned the wires for the switch, for the trigger contacts, pardon me. So now we just have to make sure we get all the wires routed around nicely. I'm going to route the wires around the right side of the gearbox so that way they are out of the way of the selector. We'll solder on the contacts for the trigger. The other day I was using the heat gun and the one cardinal rule with using any sort of hot tool, be it a hot, uh, hot air gun, soldering iron, soldering gun, blowtorch, whatever it is, if you drop it, don't try and catch it. Because <laughs> with the heat gun, as you'd imagine, the end of it, which in this case on this Black & Decker is metal, uh, dropped it, went to grab it and caught it on the metal end. You'll never catch a hot tool on the right end. You'll always catch the hot end and lo and behold couldn't get in. <laughs> fingerprint scanner on the phone wasn't working for a bit. Let's just do a quick functionality check. Now the safety for these is provided by a safety seal that I need to put in actually. But we have it on a semi. Slide it back. Semi. Semi. Semi to look at that and full auto anyway so what we've got to do now we've got to feed the power wire for the solenoid and the pneumatic tube out of the grip of the rear of the receiver and i have no idea where i put the receiver pull that through just one way of sharpening up the detent stuff a load of wires in it i don't like that <laughs> just put it on Oh, I hate G36 triggers. I really do. Where it's in there quite ni uh, nicely, actually. I'll feed the pipe round. Grab the Willie of Shame. There we are. Might want to shorten that down a bit, maybe. I tell you, I'm just going to solder it in. Be here all night, otherwise. Yep, all good. And nearly done. That's the the air end more or less done. Might do a bit of neat neatening neat, neat up actually right now. We'll grab some more cable ties. I'll tell you what, let's reward ourselves with a quick tidy up. There we are, somewhat better. The next thing I want to do is I want to change that handguard. Uh, not the handguard, the uh, top rail. I like it on the MG36, which is out of action right now. That'll be HPA at some point, I reckon. But I prefer the railed uh, carry handle on the C. Mostly because I can't actually look down that sight with my goggles on. So I quite like it, but it's just not... I can't... It just sits too low to the gun with my goggles to work. And there we go. G36. 
G36C. I can't fold the stock. I was just about to. But, uh, yeah. Stock's no longer foldable, but we do have a very quiet HPA build, hopefully. Just about a thousand. That'll do us. Slight semi auto trigger issue. As per with a G36C. <laughs> that is a HPA. <laughs> That's the Foverine Evo. So rather than being in a crappy M4 body, we are talking about a G36C, but annoyingly right now, I can't find a pin for the front, so keeping with the fulcrum ethos of not doing things properly, we've had to put a screw in the front. <laughs> but that's it for this video, I hope it was of some use to you, um, I've got more in-depth videos on the Foverine and all that, and you can check those out in the, I'll, tell, I'll make this as part of a playlist, H, uh, HPA stuff and all that. And uh, make sure you check out those videos for more details and all that. So if you found this video useful, please make sure you leave a like. And if you want to be part of the channel, then make sure you subscribe too. And once you've done that, you can check out the most recent Airsoft event, which was an absolute corker. The Halloween 2023 event at Commander Elite, The Purge.